This year's VBS is a study of truth, and truth is desperately needed in our day. We are constantly bombarded with lies, flat out lies, throughout this world. This entire month that we just began here in June is a celebration of sin in our nation. And, and, and some of the greatest and strongest and most powerful companies are gathering around behind it to celebrate wickedness here within our country. They tell us that pride is good. And sin is too. There is no such thing as sin within their minds. Do you ever imagine? Do you ever imagine that we'd be living in the hour in which we're living? And this constant bombardment of lies is most heartily affected on the youth within our nation because they've never known a time when there was more truth and less uh, lies. Now they know a time when there's more lies than there is truth. That constant bombardment of those lies has caused a lot of people to, uh, they say, lose their faith. Uh, they even have a catch term for this. Uh, it's called deconstruction, where they say they have been a Christian, now they're going through what they believe in, they're deconstructing it, and they're going to come out on the other side and they don't worry about there being a God anymore. This ain't a new phenomenon. You know, a lot of people look at that and they say, well, that's something new, well, that catchphrase might be new. Deconstruction, but this has been going on for a very long time. This morning, we're actually going to look at what happens when people in a society start saying that they're losing their faith. When they begin saying things like, it's useless to serve God. It's useless to attend God's house. It's useless uh, to do and worry about the things of God. And the fact is that uh, what they are losing many times, though, is not their faith, but what they thought their faith was. Many think that faith is a feeling, a feeling, an emotion. That, that's your faith. That's your faith, how you feel about something. But faith is actually a determined understanding of how things really are. Hebrews 11.1 1 was mentioned in our Sunday school this morning. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the things that are tangible that we can see right here and now that prove to us that our faith is not in vain. Real faith must be built on the truth. And, and not just how about we feel about a situation at a certain time. You may feel like you're not a man when you're equipped like a man, but that doesn't mean you're not a man, right? You may feel like there's not a God. But somebody created all this stuff out here, right? You may feel like uh, there's not going to be a judgment coming. Let me tell you, there most certainly will be. Right? Amen. Most certainly. I heard of a pastor. He'd have a class for new believers each, uh, every so many months. And he started each semester with a jar full of beans. And he'd ask his students to guess how many beans are in that jar. And he'd write, they'd write down on a big pad of paper. Then next to those estimates that they had about how many beans they thought were in that jar, he would uh, have them make a list of their favorite songs, the songs that they liked the most. And when the lists were complete, he would reveal the actual number of beans that were in the jar. And the whole class would look over their guesses to see which estimate was the closest to being right. And then he'd turn to the list of the favorite songs. And he said, which one of these is closest to being right? This list of your favorite songs. Well, the students persisted, you know, there is no right answer there because everybody likes their songs differently, right? Everybody has different tastes, different thoughts about songs, you know. And then asked, what, when you decide what you to believe in terms of your faith, is that more like guessing the number of beans or more like choosing your favorite song?" And this is what the man said. He says, always, from old as well as young, he always got the same answer. Choosing one's faith is more like choosing a favorite song. That tells you how bad 
our society is. I was shocked to hear that. It matters what your foundation is built upon. Is real faith built on a fact that cannot change, like the number of beans in the jar? You, I mean, they, it ain't going to change, right? Those beans aren't going to jump out of there or anything, right? That that is a certain fact, right? How many beans are in that jar? Or is it built on how you feel about something? Like your favorite song. Like, I, I feel, I like, I like church this way. I like church that way. You know, it's how I feel about it. You know, it gives me a good feeling inside to know that there's a Jesus and he died for me. It gives me a good feeling to know that, you know, that I come here and I sing these songs. Or it gives me a good feeling. And that can change a good feeling like the tides of the seashore, can it? Can it not? Yeah. Your feelings fluctuate. Your feelings change. But if your faith is not grounded in something that is solid, like the rock, then you're not going to get very far. And there are a lot of people in this world today, they're deconstructing their faith. who haven't built their faith on the rock. They've built their faith on their favorite song. This is what Jesus said. He says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Are you building your faith on the unchanging rock or the ever-moving sands of the ideologies of this world? The followers of God in the prophet Malachi's day, they had built the foundation of their faith on shifting sand instead of on the solid rock of truth. And when they looked around at the world around them, which seemed to be more beneficial to those who lived outside of God's commands, they began to ask a question to God that he said was harsh. Now what had he spoke? They spoken against him. You have said it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the proud blessed. For those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. <laughs> the proud are blessed. The, all the, the, the big money have changed all their profile pictures to the proud, right? Proud of their sin. Proud of the wrong that they're doing all around. They're blessed. Look at all the money they have. They have all the power, all the money, all these... This is 2,000 years ago. This ain't today. 2,000 years ago, people were saying that. They were saying, well, it's the proud who's blessed. It's all of that. And they were saying, <clears throat> the people that were supposed to be a God, they were saying, it's vain to serve God. It's useless to serve God. Why do we do this church thing? Why do we put all this effort into it? Why do we come on Wednesday nights and worship? Why do we waste our time uh, throughout the week doing the Lord's work? Why do we do all these things? That's what they were saying. And God says, when you say things like that, you're saying some harsh against me because He says, I'm worthy, isn't He? He's worthy of everything we do. Even if the world don't appreciate it, even if nobody else appreciates it, who is it for? It's for God, isn't it? It's for God. Let's be honest with ourselves. We have all come to this point, at some point, when we felt like following God is, is wasting our time, right? We've all come to that point at different times in our lives. You ever felt that way? You get those thoughts in your mind? I have. Even though I knew the truth, I began to forget the reality of it when I saw others seem to be getting along fine without Jesus and maybe even having it better than I was. Or so I thought. So I thought. This sounds like me as a teen. I looked around and I thought, everybody out here is having fun but me. Everybody's going and doing going to these places that, that I'm told I can't go to because that's wrong. They're going to them. 
They're going out, they're celebrating, they're having fun, they're drinking, going on. But I wasn't doing that. And I thought something was being held away from me. When in reality, God was keeping me away from something that would destroy me. He was keeping me away from that. But I didn't know that. We all have felt these things in our heart before. Even after I thought I was building on facts and I fell back on feeling, I remember a pastor at a church and there was a particular thing going on, a hard time dealing with religious people who were rejecting people who were being saved. And I, I didn't know exactly how to handle it. And I had to go and, and ask an older follower of Jesus what to do. I said, it just feels like every time I try to do something, it just isn't turning out right. It seems like the people of God don't want to be the people of God. It seems like that everything I'm doing, just like these guys were saying, what God says is you're speaking harsh against me. It seems like that's going on. And that wise old gentleman... He pointed me to a verse. And I, I immediately wrote this verse in the front of my Bible. I think it's a verse you should write in front of your Bible because there's going to come a time when you're going to get discouraged. When you're going to feel like doing this thing for God just don't seem right. When you're going to start sounding like these dummies here in Malachi's day, like the dummy I was at different points, you're going to start thinking like that. And this verse should be your thought. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, the Apostle Paul speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he spoke these words. He said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Steadfast. Stand strong. Immovable. Don't be moved. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Not just staying in one place, but moving forward in the work of the Lord. And listen to these words. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Your labor is not in vain. God is using what is going on for His purposes and His plans. And even if everything looks like it's going to, going to pot, it's going bad, it's going to be alright. What you've done is eternal. What you're doing is of eternal significance. We want instant results in our faith. We want things to happen just like that. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah? Amen. We want to see it right then. I know I want to see it right then. <clears throat> but that's not how it works. We like to put everything in a box, don't we? Everything in a box. We like it all very tidy, very neat, very organized. Everything's always going to go the way we expect it to go. But God isn't like that. Life isn't like that, is it? God is uh, much bigger than us. And there's a lot of things going on. And if we'll just do what He called us to do, He'll take care of the rest. Amen. He'll take care of the rest. And the fact is, we need the ups and downs of life to grow. As we choose to live on the truth of God and reject the shifting sands of this world. As we see the love He has for us and we will find ourselves being molded into His image. Becoming what our Creator designed you to be has to be the ultimate fulfillment in life, right? We need to become what God wants us to be, but we won't do that. We won't do that. If we don't keep a steady supply of the truth and His Word and the remembrance of His love right before us. We can find ourselves asking the same questions here as these followers in Malachi's day were asking, is this to my benefit? Is this to my benefit? Because we find that we're basing our faith on the sand of how we feel rather than the hard rock truth that cannot be moved found in the Bible. Do you read this Bible? Do you read this Bible? And not only do you read it, do you hide it in your heart? Do you, is that your foundation for what you believe? Is that your eyeglasses, your rose-colored glasses, you heard that old song, that you put on, that you see the rest of the world through? Because if you don't see the world through the lens of the Bible, you're going to be very discouraged, okay? You're not going to know that there's coming a judgment one day. You're not going to see things as they should be. And the more people take you away from the truth of the Word of God, the more people push you away from that, the more you go away from that, then the weaker you're going to be. 
You ever heard of Mark Twain? You may have heard that name before. Yeah, we had to read him in school, didn't we? Mark Twain, writer Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer. From what I understand, Mark Twain was not a Christian whatsoever. Nor did he claim to be one when he was courting his future wife, Olivia Langdon. Well, back in Twain's day, a man had to go up and he asked to ask for the hand of the lady that he wanted to marry from the father of the bride. And uh, he had a problem. Olivia was a professing Christian and a professing Christian family that wouldn't allow their daughter to marry an unbeliever. You know, they didn't want that to happen. So to overcome that, Twain took on this guise of being a spiritual seeker. I'm just here looking uh, for God, you know. Y'all pray for me uh, as I try to clean up my life and I, you know, I want to marry Olivia. So Twain, influenced by that, presumably he converted, or at least he said he did. And Olivia's family was convinced Twain was a Christian. They permitted the marriage to take place. Well, after their wedding, it said that Twain would ridicule Olivia's beliefs in God, mock her and her devotion. Uh, soon Olivia's optimism, which was high, one of the things he loved about her, honestly, it began to wane and her faith began to cool. Eventually, she set aside her religion altogether and a deep sorrow filled her life all the time. And Mark, he loved her. He never meant to hurt her, but he had broken her spirit. Amen. Supposedly, he said, Livy, if, if it comforts you, lean on your faith. In which she replied, I cannot anymore. I cannot. Because she moved away from the rock into the sand. She moved away from the rock into the sand, if she was ever on the rock at all. A faith that is more like your favorite song will not be able to withstand the hardships of criticism, the struggles that you're going to face in life. Your faith's not going to stand in situations like that. You need the hard truth that is unchanging, like the number of beans in the jar to get through the tough days, don't you? In our VBS this year, this is the faith that we're going to be presenting to old and young alike, every age. A faith built on the truth that cannot be moved, even when the world seeks to conform you to its image, as it most certainly will in this day and age. This is our focus verse. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Y'all ever play with Play-Doh years ago? You remember that? Play-Doh? You could just move it around, twist it around, however you wanted it to be. You could form Play-Doh into whatever you wanted. But if the Play-Doh hardened, if it hardened, what did you have? You had a rock, didn't you? I know a lot of times we put those little lids on the Play-Doh can and we put the Play-Doh down in there and we come back, shake it around, it was like a rock in there. You try to get out and turn around, you ain't getting any movability out of that whatsoever, right? It had conformed, it had solidified. And, and God wants us to conform us into a certain image, into His image. He wants us to look like Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us, you're called a Christian because you're supposed to be a little Christ. You're supposed to look like Jesus. Now, you're all at different levels of that. You're all at different aspects of that. But you should be growing toward that, right? That's where God wants us to be. That's what He is doing there by transforming us, by the renewing of our mind. And during VBS, we're going to be renewed, as it says there, transformed from five lies. Five lies that may appeal to you like your favorite song, but they aren't actually true. Five lies. First one is this, truth can be different for different people. You have your truth, I have my truth. How many has heard that before? You have your truth, I have my truth. Even former President Trump, when he lost the 2020 election, he created his own social media app. It's called Truth. And when you go on there and you're going to post on his social media, it says, post your truth. Let me tell you what, you have your opinion. You do not have your truth. Amen. There is one truth, right? One truth. 
And Psalm 119, 60, and the Word tells us, the entirety of your Word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. We have to unlearn, we have to pull away, we have to renew our mind from the idea that everybody can have a different truth, because they can't. That's not true, right? It's not real. Second, Second lie, we need to conform our minds away from them. Do what makes you happy. Follow your heart. Every Disney movie you've ever seen tells you this, right? Just go out and follow your heart. It's whatever, however you feel. If you feel like you're a, a man trapped in a woman's body, well, that's just how you feel, right? If you feel like... Uh, uh, having three wives is okay. That's all right, okay? If you feel within your heart that it's okay to live with that person and not get married, well, that's all that matters, right? If you feel that way, just follow your heart is the lie out here today. Society is a very me-focused, assuming that our feelings are more important than reality. But what does the Bible say in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Right? We can't live by our heart how we feel, how we, our emotions about it. We have to live by the Word of God. That's what keeps us. That's what guides us. That's what gives us strength. Another one. Number three. Being a good person, that's what gets you to heaven. Is that not what... You go out here and you ask anybody on the street who's in heaven, well, the good people are. The good people. The good people. That, that's what people think. The Pope up here. Recently on the news, he come out and he said, everyone is basically good. And everybody that's a Christian said, what? That's not true. Everyone, what does the Bible says? The Bible says in Romans 3, 23 and 24, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We are all not basically good. We have all sinned and we need a Savior. But this man tells us that we don't. We don't because we're all basically good. And all good people are going to heaven, right? But the ones who are going to heaven is, is in verse 24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, right? Amen. There's one good guy to this story. He came and died on the cross for us, didn't He? Amen, preacher. Not only that, there's many ways they say you can get to heaven. Is that not true? Doesn't matter what religion you are. There's all these different ways. Just you go your way, I'll go my way. It's okay. In every national incident we have today, what happens? What do they do? They gather together to pray. Pray. And what do they do? Well, they bring a Muslim. They bring a Hindu. They bring a Buddhist. They bring all these different types of religions together and say we're all going to pray. And they act like they're praying to the same God. They ain't praying to the same God, okay? Amen. They ain't praying to the same... That's a lie! It's a lie. And, and, and they're not all going to heaven. Islam will not lead you to heaven. Hinduism will not lead you to heaven. Buddhism will not lead you to heaven. Atheism will certainly not lead you to heaven. None of these things lead you to heaven except the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And yet they put a mockery on what prayer is. We're calling out to something that's not real. Or, or the demons that hide behind the other religions as the Word of God says. This is what it says in Acts 4.12. Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That's the rock. That's the truth. Yet this lie that everybody's going to heaven, it ain't true, is it? It ain't a bit true. And, but we'll, it feels good to believe that. Makes you feel good. Finally this. Finally this lie. If you don't agree with me, you don't love me. Have you heard this? Yep. Is this not the mantra of the nation right now? Amen. If you don't agree with me, you don't love me. 
I met a man in the store the other day. He was complaining about a recent customer that come in, said he was trying to save him. He was real hateful and mean to him, this man was. He was more political than he was uh, about the Bible. He was more concerned with who was getting elected than I believed in who could lead that man to to find Jesus. And uh, I told the man, I said, Jesus loves you. He came to die for your sins. He wants you to receive him by grace through faith, but that's your decision. Now, this is the truth, you know. And this man, he claimed to be of a different faith, a different religion. I don't know if he understood what his religion was, to be honest, from what I understood. But pray for that man. Pray for that man. This is why we should always share the truth. If you don't share the truth this way, you're against God. All right? If you're more worried about who's getting elected than you are uh, the blood of Jesus Christ, you're against God. Amen. If you're more an elephant or you're more a donkey than you are under the lamb, you're against God. Okay? This is just the truth. Ephesians 4.15 Speak the truth in love. Why? That you may grow up in all things into Him who is the head, Christ. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. Be factual. Be as solid as the rock. But you speak it in love. You speak it with kindness. You speak it with concern that you want to see that person saved. You speak it with concern that you want to see people grow up in Christ. Don't just tack them and talk down to them or that things that they don't understand. Speak the truth in love, right? And then that lie, that lie that says, if you don't agree with me, you don't love me, is proven untrue, right? So where are you? Where are you here this morning in your walk with God? In our verse, it said, the people were saying it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we've kept His ordinance, we've kept His laws, and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? We followed Him even when we're suffering. What profit is it? We feel this way, I think, when we don't see the truth. We don't see the truth. We feel this way because we begin to believe the lies of this world and we're not having our mind transformed by the renewing of it that we may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, right? There is great profit in serving the Lord. Life, and that more abundantly is what Jesus said. We need to be willing to do the hard work of showing this next generation the truth that there is great profit in serving the Lord, right? Amen. I hope you're enjoying the sermons here and have subscribed to my channel on YouTube. But I would love even more to meet with you in person at the church where I'm blessed to pastor at in White Pine, Tennessee, Omega Baptist Church. We are located directly off of Exit 4 off of Interstate 81 in Tennessee. We have worship each Sunday at 1030 and I hope you'll make plans to join us.